Welcome back. Rob Port in for Mike Kappel this morning. 701-293-9000 is your call in number 888-970-9329. House Bill 1461, that's the Common Core Bill. Got a do not pass recommendation from the House Education Committee last week. It's going to be coming to the uh, floor, but there are some last minute changes. Representative Jim Casper of Fargo is the uh, sponsor of the bill, the primary sponsor of the bill. And uh, Representative Casper, I want you to give us a rundown. What's uh, what's going on? I understand there's going to be a, a minority uh, report coming to, to the floor that uh, w- would amend the bill that, that lawmakers need to approve first before they actually vote on the bill itself. Uh, hi, Rob. Yes, thanks for having me on. That's absolutely correct. The uh, The amendment was presented to the committee last week, uh, Wednesday afternoon, in a uh, hurried-up session by, uh, or Wednesday morning, by Chairman Nathy, not giving us much time to get the amendment done and so on. Uh, we were unable to get the amendment attached to the bill. Uh, so we uh, have split the bill, and there will be the debate on adopting the amendment to replace the bill. And it was ironic that in, as a courtesy to most uh, prime sponsors of bills, if a prime sponsor of a bill comes before a committee and asks for an amendment on his or her bill, the chairman uh, almost always allows the amendment to be put on the bill. In this case, uh, Representative Nathy chose not to support that motion, and it was the amendment was defeated, and then the bill was uh, came out with a do not pass. So we'll have the big battle on the floor on Wednesday. So, so what you're saying is that the, your your bill was not allowed. The, uh, the the committee did not allow your bill to be amended. Not the committee. It's the chairman. The, the chairman. Okay. The chairman. The chairman uh, was against adding the amendment, and then uh, uh, there was very little time given to discuss the amendment. And the uh, committee itself voted not to add the amendment. And then the original bill without the amendment uh, was uh, came out with a nine to four do not pass. And so we've got a minority report by four Republicans, ironically. In a Republican-controlled legislature, you have a Republican minority report. And we will uh, ask the House floor to replace the bill with the amendment uh, Wednesday during debate. So that will be the first uh, vote that will occur. Uh, t- tell us, I mean, what, what, what exactly is being amended? What are the changes from the original bill that, that you're hoping to, to add in? In the original bill, uh, we set up an interim legislative committee to work on the standards and the assessments. And uh, the superintendent of public instruction testified during the original hearing that she felt her duties and authority was being restricted, which it was not, other than to be a part of the interim committee but not controlling the interim committee. So the amendments uh, put her back in charge of the uh, interim committee to work on new standards and assessments for the state of North Dakota. And... uh, uh, the bill appoints uh, uh, two uh, college professors in math and in English, two, uh, uh, a superintendent, two high school uh, teachers with masters in math and English, two grade school teachers with masters in math and English, a number of legislators, and uh, I may be forgetting, you know, one person. And th- that committee will meet over the next two years, so we have a broad section of interested uh, educators and legislators to be involved in that process, and then the bill, if they come up with a recommendation, would come before the legislature in the 2017 session for final approval. 701-293-9000, if folks want to join the program, 888 What What does your bill do? I mean, pe- people are saying that your bill stops Common Core. Is that true? I mean, or, I, as I read your bill, it was more about shifting how standards for North Dakota are developed uh, rather than dealing with Common Core directly, although it does require the uh, withdrawal of North Dakota from the Smarter Balance Consortium, which is how Common Core is being implemented. But, I, I mean, explain to us a little bit, if, if we're going to withdraw from the Common Core standards, how, how, how would North Dakota go about setting its own standards? Uh, Rob, the key to the bill first is we do withdraw from Common Core by withdrawing from the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. That is the number one uh, goal that I believe we need to do in North Dakota is to get out of uh, federal control and control by it's now been ceded to the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, to develop uh, the tests and, and uh, to be the brain, uh, the brains behind uh, where Common Core leads us. So we get out of that and we stop the insidious tests that have, are being developed and have already been given throughout the nation. The state of New York students uh, have taken some of these Common Core tests. About 70% of the students are failing. Uh, kids uh, in North Dakota, parents in North Dakota, and kids and parents all over the country are getting totally frustrated with uh, 
this new math and this new uh, method of teaching. So we get out, number one, and we stop it in its tracks, and we regain the sovereign control of the education system back in North Dakota. If we do not withdraw, the control of the education system in our state and where we're going is outside of our state in UCLA. Then the second thing is the standards and assessments that we will end up having in North Dakota will be developed by this committee, which I just uh, uh, indicated. And there'll be uh, plenty of opportunity for parents to have input as the committee meets, and we'll get a really true North Dakota standards and assessments instead of this uh, thing called Common Core that's developed outside of our state with no input from the state. What uh, uh, the, the, the folks uh, uh, who are currently supporting Common Core, they're saying that your bill is going to create chaos. We've already implemented these standards. Uh, your, your bill is just going to create problems and, and turn back the clock. What, what's, your, what's your response when people make that argument? That's absolutely the goal to turn back the clock, Rob. What's going on with the new standards and the methods of teaching is absolutely ridiculous. I, I've got in front of me uh, an example of what a second grader brought home for math, Common Core Math. I'll be distributing that to the floor. I'll be happy to email it to you so you can put it on your website. You can see how absolutely ridiculous this new way of trying to keep, teach a second grader how to do simple math is. So absolutely we want to get out. What will the teachers do? They go back to teaching like they always have in the past. They interact with their students. They develop tests for their students. They give the tests for their students. Uh, they teach the way they, teachers are taught in college to teach. Uh, e- each of our students are not robots that should be able to be uh, taught with one size fits all. The test is the same for everybody. How, how can you, uh, you, you gotta remember, Rob, if you, if the test is the same for everybody at the same time, you have to teach to the test because the teachers will be graded on how well their students do. And as more and more students flunk these tests nationwide, the tests will be dumbed down so that they, more students can get a passing grade. So the eventual result will be a dumbing down, uh, less education for our kids, lower standards. And we just don't need that. We need to get control of how we're going to educate our kids in the pa- like we did in the past, put it back in control of- here in North Dakota. I, I, again, so supporters of, of Common Core say that there's all sorts of educators in North Dakota, that this was a a, a state-led issue, that, that North, educators in North Dakota signed off on this. So what you're saying is that it's bad education policy, but then why, I mean, are our, our, our superintendents in favor of it? We've got a number of teachers, that, and I know there's plenty of teachers that are opposed to it as well, uh, but, I mean, there's a lot of educators that are standing up for this. If it's that bad, why did they pass this? Well, there's a lot of educators who also are not standing up but are fearful of speaking out for retribution. I've got many emails from yes, have I. across our state that state that. Um, the fact is, when uh, when we signed on to Common Core in June of 2010, we signed the Memorandum of Understanding. That Memorandum of Understanding said North Dakota will develop, uh, will, will adopt verbatim the standards of Common Core. It also said you could add up to 15% of your own input into standards and methods, but the verbatim is the key. And the testing will be based on the verbatim standards of Common Core, so it doesn't matter what we add to, we will have to have our kids ready to take a test. So all we're doing now, Rob, is instead of teaching kids to think for themselves, we're teaching kids to pass a test. That That is insidious. That is shortchanging the kids of our state uh, to be able to be educated to the best of the teacher's ability and to bring out the abilities of those kids. Uh, we going down the track of Common Core will be a terrible train wreck for the kids of North Dakota. It's just not the right thing to do from my perspective. Give us a rundown on what's going to happen on the, the floor for, for people who maybe don't understand this process. The, 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 the bill that came out of committee is not necessarily the bill that's going to be voted on. How, how, how does this process work? For people who may want to contact their lawmakers and, and urge them to vote one way or the other on this, explain to us this process. First of all, let me give the email address. It's n d l a h r e p at n d dot g o v. That email address will get to all ninety four legislators at the same time. So what the procedure will be: the bill will be up for consideration on what's called the sixth order, where the amendments are heard, and then there will be a debate on the amendment, which was not adopted by the committee, and their first vote will be on whether or not to adopt the amendment. If the amendment is adopted, the original bill is replaced entirely by the amendment, and that becomes the bill. If 
that occurs, there will be a second vote on whether or not uh, to pass the bill or defeat the bill. If the amendment fails, then there will be a second vote anyway, which will be on the original bill. Now, the original bill, in my perspective, is not as, as good as the amendment. But if we uh, fail on the amendment, we still want to pass the original bill, move it over to the Senate, and then we can work on additional amendments over in the Senate. So what you're saying is 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 urge urge uh, if, if people who want to support your position on Common Core urge your lawmakers to vote for the amendment. Uh, but even if the amendment fails, vote for the bill. Go over to the, it'll go over to the Senate and it can be improved there. Uh, that's correct. And Rob, all people should when the email legislator should put their address, and if uh, they don't have to put a phone number on, but the, uh, an address. I've gotten maybe 300 emails since uh, when, uh, Monday, and as well as, as my fellow legislators supporting the bill to get out of Common Core. Many of the people do not put their address on, which I encourage everybody put your address on so the legislators know that you know where you live uh, in our state, because there's people all over North Dakota that want out. About 98 percent of the emails I receive, Rob, are to get North Dakota out of Common Core, which means to support House Bill. 1461. I get just get a handful of emails against, uh, uh, you know, against the bill. So emails make a huge difference. Don't make phone calls. Send emails. All right, Representative Casper, thank you for your time.